Lena. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Lena. Happy birthday to you. And a card. Thank you, darling. Don't sound so surprised. That's your trouble, you know. What trouble? You take it for granted everybody's going to forget about you, don't you? Only you. Hmm. Just because your mother was such a bitch, your father had to leave home. <laughs> you think you're unlovable, don't you? I don't know why that psychiatrist makes such heavy weather of it, you know. You're a pretty straightforward case to me. Have you told him your mother was a bitch? My mother was not a bitch. <laughs> Stanley. Hmm? In loving memory of what? <laughs> uh, the times we had together. Look, it's best if you come straight out with it, you know. I shall make a scene. There you go again. Stanley, this is a memorial card. Well, we don't have to be hidebound by convention, do we? All right. When are you leaving? Look, as a matter of fact, I was too late for the shops and I just happened to have that one handy. <laughs> you keep memorial card for emergencies, do you? No, it was the one that I bought to send to Uncle Sid after my auntie Glad died. Why didn't you? <clears throat> well, I remember just in time that Uncle Sid died the year before. All right? <laughs> well, this is nice. What is? Drinking tea in bed with you. Just think. Of all the women I could be in bed with, I find myself in bed with you. Is that a compliment? You wouldn't know a compliment if I hit you over the head with one. No, what I'm saying is that you're an attractive and intelligent woman. And I'm a lucky man. Really? Put your yoghurt down. <laughs> oh, Stanley, I don't think I could cope with another fiasco this time of the morning. Think positive, Lena. And I miss my train. That's right. Oh, Stanley! I'm all yogurty. Mm. <laughs> Mr. Pamphlet, I'm afraid I should be a little late this morning. Something came up unexpectedly. <laughs> yes, that's right. Goodbye. And vice versa. Oh. Never mind, darling. It's a thought that matters. <laughs> to me, it's not. Ah, well. Can't win them all. Listen, we're going out for a meal tonight. Oh, you, you don't have to make it up to me, you know. Well, it's, it's not your fault if you no longer fancy me. For your birthday. Oh. I thought we'd drive out to one of those little country places, have a gourmet evening for two. Pretend we've only just met, you know, add a bit of spice. I could be a Japanese businessman, and you could be a very high-class call girl who loves her work. <laughs> Ask Dingley if I can borrow his wheels. All right. If you think it'll do any good. No, it's not to do good, it's to have fun. Oh, you don't mind waiting until tonight for your prezzy, do you? Since I waited this long. Huh? I have to tell you, Stanley. Actually, my birthday was last week. <laughs> How do you keep your marriage fresh, didn't you? Hmm? I don't. It's gone a bit gamey over the years. I like it that way. <laughs> Hello, Bloomers, at your service. Yeah, that's right. Hello, darling. How are you? <laughs> yeah, for you, anything. Yeah. Eight? About five feet? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I'll deliver the goods. <laughs> Naughty girl. <laughs> yeah, goodbye, then. Dingley, we're in. You're in. I met this girl from the film studios last week. Laid on the old charm. Said if ever they needed anything in a hurry, come to us. I said we specialised. What in? Charm? Infallibility. What do they want? Christmas trees. Eight five-foot Christmas trees. By when? Christmas? No, tomorrow morning. They've been let down. Well, they're going to be let down again, aren't they? I mean, where are we going to get Christmas trees this time of the year? What, they grow all the year round? But they're not in stock, Stanley. Who would stock Christmas trees in June? <laughs> to find some for ourselves. You don't seem to realise, Dingley, this is the big breakthrough. This could put the firm on the map. I could start drawing profits. Or ring round, make a laughing stock of myself. Yeah, you do that, and I'll go for a drive in the van. What for? Well, it must grow somewhere, mustn't they? <laughs> I'll get a saw. Stanley, I need the van. What for? I, uh, I promised the lady I'd deliver this morning. Well, she'll have to wait, won't she? What about infallibility? Infallibility, Dingley, as any Pope will tell you, is relative.
I thought I'd find you here. No luck? Warm weather for driving around. Uh. <laughs> Pint of the best and a large scotch. You don't sound very happy. How'd you get on? Fine. I'm writing a book of jokes about Christmas trees. <laughs> <laughs> I tried all your contacts, have you? Even him. There you are, Sansa. Do you want a dish of water for the rain? Do you? <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah, it's a good job you got me in the firm then, isn't it? You found some. Brought them back, have you? No. Why not? Where are they? On a roundabout. Oh. <laughs> a roundabout? Traffic island. Cheers. <sighs> right, that is that. Yeah, till tonight. Tonight? Yeah, well, I couldn't pinch him in the rush hour, could I? <laughs> People might misunderstand. Stanley, oh. I don't... It's all right. It's quite ethical. Some idiots planted them too close together. They need thinning out. We'll be doing them a favour. <laughs> I've got one problem. I've got to take Lena out for a meal tonight. It's her official birthday. If you think I'm doing it on my own, you're mistaken. No, I know. I'm not asking you to. There's a restaurant just a couple of miles the other side of the roundabout. It's in the guide. Their poulet sous la cloche is said to be miraculous. A book for four. Who are the others, I'm supposed to ask? Well, bring your good lady. It's time we had to get together. You mean they pinched the Christmas trees? <laughs> <laughs> a book for 9.30, right? The road will be properly quiet by then, right? So we see the ladies into the bar about nine, set them up with their aperitifs. We nip out and do the job and join them later for the nosh. <laughs> ah. Couldn't we do it on the way back? We'd be properly dark by then. Dingley, you cannot save her a cordon bleu meal knowing you've got to chop Christmas trees down. <laughs> It's sacrilegious. Besides. What? Well, Nina's got rather strict principles. She had an unfortunate upbringing. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't like it. Oh, all right, all right, all right. So we lose the studio connection. And after all, what's money? The chicken's good, you say? Why can't you take Lena out another night? Would be simpler. I made her my solemn promise. Break it. She's used to it. <laughs> can't. Not this time of year. What are you talking about? Well, you know how insecure she is. I mean, the fact that she clings to me speaks for itself. <laughs> She's particularly vulnerable now, you see, because her father left home on her birthday. And with her being father fixated and me being a surrogate father, she projects all that implied rejection onto me, thinks I don't love her. Do you? Well, that's not the point. <laughs> Which is a pretty straightforward case. I mean, why she spends all that money on that shrink, I don't know. We can't afford it. I mean, it's not that I'm jealous, it's just the money. Anyway, the long and the short of it is, her feeling unloved makes her feel unfeminine, you know? Which, in turn, makes me feel unmasculine, and so on. <laughs> so, anyway, what I've got to do is to convince her that she's an attractive and desirable woman. Which she is. Which she is. Yeah, so, um... <laughs> so that we can get back to something approaching a full and mature relationship. You mean your oats? <laughs> well, and you're going to do all that this evening in between pinching Christmas trees? <laughs> I'm doing the groundwork this evening, Dingley, laying the foundations. A fabulous meal in a congenial setting. And while she's bathing in a gastronomic glow, I'll be there, charming, attentive, making her feel pure woman. I suppose you can't afford this meal. Good restaurants come expensive. Well, I take it you're paying your way. We're paying our way. Who's paying your way? Oh, well, we'll discuss that later. <laughs> oh, good Lord, five o'clock already. <laughs> How time flies when you're on the job, as the bishop said to the actress. <laughs> Don't stop if you're enjoying it, as the actress said to the bishop. <laughs> well, listen, I've got to pop out and uh, buy Lena a prezi before the shop shut. Right. Something very feminine, all part of the treatment. Um, <clears throat> How much do I owe the firm? It's in the book. Tanner would cover it. We'll pick you up uh, about 8.30. Right. This is going to be a night to remember, Dingley. <laughs> <laughs> mind? Why should I mind? It's just that I've prepared myself for a twosome at seven-ish and find it's to be a foursome at 9.30. Well, I just thought four would be jolly. You mean two wouldn't? Well, you know, with four, the conversation just bubbles along. Whereas with two, it grinds to a halt. Do you have a bad day at work? <laughs> I'm sorry, Stanley. You know how I get when my blood sugar's low. Well, you want some sugar? <laughs> I want some food. Shall I get you a biscuit? <laughs> there aren't any biscuits. You've eaten all the biscuits. Bread and cheese? There's no cheese. You've eaten all the cheese. So, 
What's the form? Do we play two Japanese businessmen meeting two call girls? Oh, that'll be them. Oh, God. Oh, so? I don't want to go. I don't want to see anybody. I just want to stay in and watch television and eat fish fingers. Look, do you think you ought to take a chunk of bread along? <laughs> Why, don't they have any there? <laughs> to eat in the van. Van? Uh. I am being invited out as a special treat to gnaw chunks of bread in a van with two people I don't particularly want to know. And me. Well, come on, what are we waiting for? Let's go and enjoy ourselves. <laughs> well, here we all are then. <laughs> uh, Lena, this is Connie. Connie's quite a character. You'll love her. Is that an order? Hello, <laughs> oh, Lena. Hungry. Uh, Lena's blood sugar's a bit low. <laughs> it always makes her... Well, she's not always... Uh, shall we get in? <laughs> well, who's going to sit on whose knee, then? <laughs> oh, sorry, Connie. Uh, just looking for the gear lever. <laughs> Kingley. Stanley. Just there. All right. What is? Pardon? What is just there? What is, Stanley? What? What is just there? Oh, it's gone now. We have a table book for 9.30. Bloomers. Oh, very well, Mr. Bloomers. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like a drink while you're waiting. Ah. Right, girls, there's the bar. Come on, Dingley. <laughs> if anything should... Uh... Come on, Dingley! No, nothing. Have you got any idea what this is about? Only that they have to pick up some trees. They're picking up trees. <laughs> Why bloomers? Well, this is by nature of being a business trip. I thought the firm might look upon it as a legitimate out-of-town expense. Cheer up. I've never known you so quiet. When I was a solicitor, Stanley, I developed a sort of sixth sense. When I got that sick feeling in the stomach, I'd advise the client to back out. I've got it now. So what can go wrong? And it's not two miles to the roundabout, it's nearer five. Don't give it choke. You've given it choke. Well, this is nice. Chin chin. I'm terribly sorry. There seems to be a misunderstanding. We, we've no booking for bloomers. No booking? Well, the gentleman was to telephone to confer. He seemed uncertain as to numbers. I'm afraid he didn't telephone. Of course he telephoned. He wouldn't have forgotten to telephone. He's a totally reliable person. I was with him when he telephoned. How dare you say he didn't telephone? Perhaps I could have a word with Mr. Bloomers. His name is not Bloomers, and I am not Mrs. Bloomers. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. My blood sugar is rather low. <laughs> Oh, 
told you it'd be child's play. What do we do now? We don't have to do anything. I'm hungry. Have an olive. You have to be philosophical, my dear. They're in charge. But they're incompetent. That's right, dear. Same again. Uh, if I get blotto drinking on an empty stomach... Then they'll have to carry you home, won't they? <laughs> Let's make it double. It'll save time. <laughs> We'll have time for one in the bar before we eat. Life's too short to worry. You know my motto? When there's trouble, sit tight, look helpless, and smile. Something always turns up. in the back in a minute. Leave this to me. I'm good with police. That's better. Evening, officers. Everything all right, sir? Oh, yes, no problem. I appreciate you stopping, though. Never know nowadays, do you? Roundabouts aren't really meant for conveniences, you know, sir. No, well, the tree's like an acid soil. <laughs> I'm a hot dog. Is this your van, sir? Yes. Uh, no. Well, it belongs to the firm. Well, to a friend of mine. Is your friend with you, sir? Uh, yes, he's roundabout. I went off to stretch his legs. While you, were uh, relieved yourself. That's right. Are you the driver? Yes. Uh, no, well, that is to say, um... Do you have your driving license on you, sir? Hmm. Oh. Any means of identification? Uh, well, I put my best jacket on before I came out, so it didn't transfer things. Going somewhere special? Yes, the bell. Superb food. You know it? About five miles up the road. That's right. Would you mind calling your friend over, sir? No, of course not. Dingley! Oh, he's on the roundabout, is he, sir? Yes, sir. Right. <laughs> you were on it together. <laughs> Anything wrong in that? No, not necessarily, no, sir. <laughs> Dingley! <laughs> Very odd to have to relieve yourself five miles from your destination, sir. Oh, well, rather a lot to drink before I went out. You know, <laughs> must be a dry, <laughs> Do you mind blowing in this? I'm <laughs> tea. That's all right. Tea won't show. Just a good steady blow until the bag's full. You know if I check the van, sir? Well, I am in rather a hurry. Well, you've got to wait for your friend, haven't you, sir? Borderline. Who's <laughs> yours, sir? They're a present. From your friend? <laughs> to a woman friend. Oh, congratulations, sir. No sign of your friend, is there? Dingley! <laughs> These trees, sir. Yeah, I told you, I'm a horticulturist. They got no roots. What about it? They wouldn't grow. Well, I know that. They're not for growing. <laughs> Delivering them somewhere, aren't you? Yeah, when you'll allow me, yes. Ah, oh, so you're not going to the bell. I'm going to the bell afterwards. How many time of the year to be delivering Christmas trees, is it? Look, I think you're victimising me. If you could just clear this point up for us, sir. He's a Muslim. Muslims don't celebrate Christmas, sir. How exactly? So he can have Christmas whenever he wants. He's not tied down like the rest of us. No law against it, is there? Two Christmas trees? He's got two wives. <laughs> this tyre looks a bit dodgy, isn't it? Sorry? Mind if we check the safety of the vehicle, sir? Yes, I do. We weren't really asking, actually, sir. Your table is ready now, sir. Thank you. I'm afraid the bar is for diners only. I must ask you to leave. I'm afraid we can't do that. I must insist, madam. I'm terribly sorry. It's not our fault we got no table, is it? It's your blunder. How dare you? What do you take us for? A couple of call girls? Now, look here, madam, really. Excuse me. If you would care to be our guests, 
One illegal tire. Internal indicator light inoperative. Park it on a roundabout. Committing a nuisance. Funny about your friend, though, isn't it? Can't think what's happened to him. <laughs> I'll go and have a look, shall I? Uh, I'll have a, another look for my papers. Huh? Oh, um. Seems to be all I have on me. <laughs> I think it might be a good idea if you came down to the station, sir. Clear up a few points. Look, I, I, I do have a friend waiting for me. Oh, on the roundabout, sir? Uh, no, at the bell. She'll vouch for me. Oh, this would be the owner of the uh, frilly knickers, would it, sir? That's right. That I would like to see. How many wives do you say you're Muslim friend, Ed, sir? trouble you. Yeah? I wonder if I might ask you if you are acquainted with this uh, gentleman. I've never seen him before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, Johnny. <laughs> 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 Good man. <laughs> right, Scott. Sorry, sir, we're closed. <laughs> oh, that's very nice of you. Hard oh, Scott, wasn't it? Better make it two. Very kind of you, sir. Make it three. They have just gone off with two Chinese. Japanese. Businessmen. Cheers. Cheers? <clears throat> Don't have to have a chunk of bread, do you? It's not a calf, sir. What was the charge? Willful damage of property. Illegal parking. Driving an unsafe vehicle, you have to get that van fixed, you know. Why didn't you come when I called you? Risk the good name of the firm. Have bloomers dragged through the court. No chance of another, of course. Don't push your luck, mate. We're not at the windmill now. <laughs> Let's go, Stanley. I'm tired and I want to go to bed and forget today ever happened. What do you mean, go? We've got a job to do. What about our infallibility? Stanley, I'm hungry and I'm tired. My wife has gone off with the Japanese. <laughs> Look, we'll nip round to the film studios now, and then you can have a lie in. There won't be anybody at the studios. Well, we'll leave them outside the gates. And they'll get pinched. Look, Dingley, you'd pinch Christmas trees in June.
Bunny? Dr. Lamb, now you're not to get upset, but I'm not coming in to see you today. I don't need you. That's right. Goodbye. How did you get on last night? It's amazing. What is it? Some men have the ability to make a woman feel pure woman. You know. I think I'll rustle up some breakfast. Stanley. Uh, Luna, I've got to be in the shop this morning. No, Stanley, you're taking the morning off. Right. <laughs> oh, did Lena tell you anything? Did Connie? <sighs> what do you think how good they are at selling motor cars as well? <laughs> as well as what? <laughs> The film studios ring up, say the trees were all right. I don't know, I wasn't in this morning. I uh, <laughs> had to take the morning off. <laughs> <clears throat> did um, did you give her the underwear? No. Uh, thought I'd stop while I was winning. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> 